you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated for just a few minutes. We're going to take the time today to go over some announcements. How many of you got blasted yesterday with announcements? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Today is our coin drive for our NAYC. So we want to invite you, if you have any coins today, to come put it in the bucket. You notice we didn't do too big of a bucket. But if you have any coins, dollars, whatever you got, um, this is a fundraiser for our NAYC. Also, we are selling chocolate-covered strawberries for February 13th delivery. And so um, our young people, if you haven't got your form, make sure you get it over here. And then if you are willing to buy chocolate uh, strawberries, hit up one of our kids, okay, and do that. Um, lots of things going on. Next Sunday, we will have our special speaker with us. And um, we had a little mix up on the date. He's not here today, as you can see. But we'll be here next Sunday. And so we want you to invite somebody. We all have needs. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that you know that has a need. Um, and so invite them to come next Sunday at 11. And the last thing I have is we sent out First Steps. And First Steps is a new program that we are rolling out, which is for our, our guests to become members, to get involved, to get plugged into ministry. And so we want, Pastor wants our church to go through this class first, okay? So we know what we're doing with our guests. And so in February, the first three Mondays, we're gonna run this through our small groups. Um, and so as a church, you have an opportunity to go through this course in February at our home from 7 to 8 p.m. on these three Mondays. If you are not able to come on a Monday night in March, this course will be taught during Sunday school, okay, in the sanctuary, in adult class. And so we are hoping through February, March, we will get all of you guys through this course, all right? First Sunday, our first course is about who we are. Second course is about who you are. And the third course is getting you plugged into where your personality, strengths, and your spiritual gifts are. Okay? And our hope is by the time we get to the end of that third course, that everyone will, be, uh, will know the gifting that God has put in you and where to get plugged in into IRC. All right? So we want to encourage you to do that. All right, Pastor, am I forgetting anything? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Brother Mike. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and get our offering and prayer requests out of the way, and then we're going to continue our worship service and, and praising the Lord. How many came to worship this morning? To worship the Lord. Amen. He's good, right? Amen. Uh, we have several prayer requests to this morning. Let's remember the Henson family. Let's continue to pray for uh, Jason and Katie Nottingham and their entire family. Let's, uh, pray for Donna and healing in her body, Sister Tina for healing. Let's remember to continue praying for Ralph for healing. And then let's continue to pray for Lauren Tenney. And, uh, let's remember uh, Sergio and Angelina. There, there were some guests last Sunday, and they're not here today, but let's uh, keep them and their family, their children, in our prayers. Amen. And... Uh, as you're getting your offering ready, let's just go ahead and pray over each need in this house today. God, we thank you, God, for everything that you do, God, in our lives, Lord. Lord, we know, God, that you were the first one to love us, God, before we were even born. God, when we were born, you knew who we would be. You knew where we would end up in life, God. God, we are got our focus on the expected end because, God, you've given us an expected end. God, we've got heaven to look forward to, God. We've got revival to look forward to and god we thank you for every need that's in this house god because we know god that not a thing is too hard for you god you are an impossible god lord you can do impossible things uh, and make them possible you can turn 
impossible situations around, Lord. Uh, we know, God, that you are able, God, to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. God, I pray, Lord, uh, for the Henson family, Lord. Uh, I plead the blood of Jesus over their life, Lord. I pray for Sister Katie, God, and her family, Lord, and Jason Nottingham and their children, Lord. I pray, God, for Donna for healing, God, for Sister Tina for healing. God, I pray for healing in Ralph's body, Lord, and I pray, God, that you would touch Lauren, oh God, right now where she's at, Lord. Uh, Lord, we know, God, that you are able, God. We pray, Lord, that you would bless our offering today when we bring it and give to you, Lord. We pray, God, that you would bless our lives, God, that you would help us to be a witness everywhere that we go. Help us to be a light to this world, uh, at our jobs and our families, God, uh, and every in our friends and our acquaintances, Lord. We praise you, God. Uh, we ask that you'd bless every need in this house as we continue to worship, uh, worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and bring up your offering in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 
<laughs> Somebody has been convinced in this house, and I'm telling you, God has heard you. He has seen you. He has seen you surrender to the enemy, and he says, no more. No more will you surrender to the enemy. <laughs> the thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and destroy, but we win. He comes to steal your victory, He comes to steal your joy, but we win. Satan rolls like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. But I know the one who's greater, I know the one who has all power. For Jehovah, a warrior. For us, we win. But Jehovah, our warrior, is fighting for us. We win. I gotta sing my part again. <laughs> the thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But we win. You win. <laughs> he comes to steal your victory. He comes to steal your joy. We win. Roars like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. But I know the one who's greater. I know the one who has. Jehovah, a warrior who's fighting for us, we win. For Jehovah, a warrior who's fighting for us, we win. Now your body may be sick and you're hurting. Jesus, we win. We win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. 
we win. We win. win. We win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. We Over fear, we win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. We win. We win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. Bitterness, we win. In the name of Jesus, we win. We win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. We win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. In the name of Jesus, we win. In the somebody are we winners today hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus amen amen turn to someone next to you real quick and just shake their hand tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord today amen tell them you're a winner amen come on Look at him, look him in the eye and tell him, you're a winner. Hallelujah.
We win. We win. Every time we win when we got God on our side. Amen. God is so good. It's good to have everybody here today. Uh, awesome job by our worship team again. Uh, they are just bringing new song after new song after new song. My Lord, these guys are doing awesome. Aren't you? Isn't it amazing? They're not playing the same songs every weekend. They're, they're, it's something different every weekend. It has been so awesome. Amen. Come on, give them a hand clap of appreciation. Hallelujah. It is, uh, it is such a, a difficult task sometimes to um, come up with something new. But they just are, they're doing so incredible. And we're so thankful for Sister Dansby and the job she's doing with our worship team. Amen. And uh, I know she, she appreciates that. But it, it wouldn't happen if it wasn't for the rest of the team. Brother Marcos and Brother Ezekiel and Brother Austin and Brother Michael and Sister Melanie and Sister Izzy, the singers and everything. They're, uh, they're just doing an incredible job. And uh, I'm taking a minute to brag on because that's not an easy song to sing. It, it, it's not. That's not easy. I watched him in practice this morning. And Austin, I don't know how many times Austin, his face, I, I was watching him laughing because I was like, man, he is so concentrated on doing that. I wanted to get in front of him and do a warrior dance. <laughs> just kind of break it up a little bit. But uh, it, it, just an awesome job. And so uh, I love and appreciate uh, our church and what God's doing in your church. Amen. Everybody say it's my church. And this is your church. And it belongs to you. And uh, we are the body of Christ. We are Christ's church. Amen. And so, um, so we all belong to Jesus. But this building and this body that is here this morning, it's us. And uh, we love to have fun in God. I, was, I thought I might see somebody had a little Indian in them jump out there for a minute. I kept waiting for the, the little head to come out, the, the thing. We got a red band band back there. And, thought they were going to have a little Indian dance, Sister Green. It, it was, uh, we'll have to sing it again and see what happens next time. Hallelujah. Amen. But, uh, but God is just blessing our church so much. Good to have our visitors with us today. God bless you. Good to have you here. Um, our church is growing, and, uh, and we are so thankful for that. And so we're starting new uh, new programs and uh, new classes and stuff for our, our new people. And Sister Dansby talked about first steps, and she explained everything that we're going to be doing. And she said the pastor wants everybody to go through it. If you have been a member of this church for 30 years, 40 years, or 50 years, you're still going to go through it. Amen. Um, this is a part of our membership for our church, and uh, and we want everybody to enjoy a part of it. That way you can say, I, I went through it, I experienced it. You're not being grandfathered in. Amen. I'm just teasing with you. Come on now. Um, but we, we want everybody to go through this. This is an excellent program. It helps everybody to understand who the church is and where the church came from and uh, what you're a part of, and it helps you to grow. I want to grow in God more than anything. Jesus said to go out into the highways and the byways and to compel them to come to the wedding feast and to enjoy the feast. But then the most important thing he said after that was make them disciples. And we want to make disciples. We can build a big church and we can have a whole lot of people here, but if we don't have no disciples, we haven't done anything. Amen. We want people to be disciples. We want you to go out and preach the gospel to your neighbors, to your friends, to your co-workers. We want you to share the word of God with people everywhere you go. We cannot spread the gospel sitting on a pew. We can't do it. We can't spread this news, this, this presence, this joy, this baptism of the Holy Ghost that God has given us just sitting on a pew. We've got to get out to where people are at. Every day we are, where, we are where people are at. And so we need to witness to them and love them and uh, help them. Amen. You will grow helping others in Jesus' name. Well, praise God. Um, today I'm going to be ending our series on sparring partners. And I may or may not get in the boxing ring this morning. 
But, um, but I am going to be closing out today with our series on sparring partners. And today I'm going to be talking about who's in your corner. Today I want us to understand, before we leave here today, I want us to understand who's fighting for us. They sang that song. It was, it was perfect. Uh, we do win. We are winners because of who we have fighting for us. Brother Michael wrote a song they'll be singing pretty soon about the fight is fixed. Amen. That was last week. I preached on the fight is fixed. He just wrote a song about it and uh, sang it this morning. And I told him, I said, put that down on paper. You guys practice it and sing it soon. So um, God is, is working. But I believe that we are more than overcomers through the word of our testimony because of the battles that we've been through and the fights that we've won. Amen. Uh, uh, now, if you're a little person, you ever been in a fist fight and beat up a big person, you brag about that. Right? You brag about it. Yeah, I beat that big old boy up. He was 300 pounds and I was 180 pounds and I whooped him good. You brag about that. You go tell your friends. You want to be on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything else. You got to get it out there. And you want to brag about that. Well, let's brag about in my corner. Let's brag about the victories that we won, the fights that we won today. So if you would just remain standing with me. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse number 1. We're going to read just four verses, and then I'll let, let all the saints say amen. If, if God has filled you with the Holy Ghost, and it's the best thing that's ever happened to you, why don't you just shout to the Lord for it right now? Come on now. That's what God does for us. And so if you're here today and you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I believe God can fill you with it today. If he can do it for me and all those around us this morning, I know he can do it for you. And so I know it's real and I know God does these things and he works these miracles. If you need a healing in your body today, you can walk out of here healed today. And Jesus, thing we could ever think or imagine in our lives. Let's let him be that today. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse number 1. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots, and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is in your corner. <laughs> it says he's with you. But I'm going to change it just a little bit. For the Lord thy God is in your way unto them. Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. It is he to fight for you and against your enemies to save you. Everybody say praise the Lord. He's in my corner. He's in my corner. Amen. Lord, we thank you today for your word. Lord, I pray that you would just anoint this house right now. Every prayer meeting, God, every prayer that has been spoken over this service today. I pray, God, that you would just begin to move right now in a supernatural way. Heaven, we need to hear from heaven today, God, in this house. Help us, oh God, not to leave here without hearing your voice, without touching your throne, without being touched in our lives. In the name of Jesus, let your anointing fall in this house. In Jesus' name I pray. Now put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise before you're seated today. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 20 tells us about the principles governing warfare for the people of God. It provided warfare for the people that were about to go into battle, but it also gave them instructions how to conduct themselves during the battle. You see, God not only said how they were to dress and the weapons they were to take and how they were to look and how they were to separate themselves in Deuteronomy, but he also told them who to look to. I don't want, he said, I don't want my people to be scared when they enter into a battle and they think or they see that the enemy is bigger than them, more powerful than them, is stronger than them, has more victories than them. 
time. It can be intimidating for a fighter before he enters into a ring that he sees his opponent wearing a victory belt or seeing a belt that has victories on it. The enemy has won many battles. He's won many, many fights. Many of us have fallen in battles against the enemy, and many of us have succumbed to temptations and, and fights in our life against uh, addictions and problems and, and hurt and pain. But there's a promise that the Lord gives the Israelites here, and that is that you will overcome if you'll keep your eyes focused on me and not on the enemy. We need to take our eyes off of the enemy and start looking to the helper of our faith. We need to look to the one that gives us strength, the one that encourages us, the one that is on our side. He said, I'm on your side. That means really that I'm before you, I'm behind you, I'm beside you, I'm in you, I'm over you, I'm beneath you. It doesn't matter if you turn to the left or to the right. I've got you under my hand. Everything is in control. One man said, I'd rather be in the hand of an angry God than not in God's hand at all. God has got you in the palm of his hand today. And no matter the battle that you're going through or the fight that you face in life, God's going to be in your corner and he's going to be encouraging you and he's going to be lifting you up and he's going to give you strength that passes all understanding. He's going to give you peace and ability. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. He's going to give you the needs to overcome the battle that you face. We're overcome many times by sickness. And because of our sickness, we start fretting. How many of us have had a stomach flu or something happen? Uh, we get sick and we get weak and all of a sudden our mind starts playing tricks on us and it's really just the devil telling us, oh, you got cancer. Oh, you got a disease. Oh, my God, you're going to die. This is worse than what you think. It's not just a cold. The devil loves to do this. He loves to speak those words into your heart. Have you ever been called into the boss's office uh, and the walk from your workstation to the office is, oh my God, I'm going to get fired today. I'm in trouble. The boss is terrified. Don't be scared. I've got everything under control. If your boss calls you in the office and fires you, it's because I'm opening a door somewhere else. Uh, if he calls you in the office and tells you you got a disease, uh, it's because I'm going to heal you and work a miracle in your life. And I'm going to bring you out of this trial. Somebody today needs to hear this. Uh, you need to get up and tell the devil, I'm tired of your words against me. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Come on and shout to God today. God's promises are yes and amen. You're not defeated. You're not beat down. You're not under the ground. God's given you the victory. Wake up. And they got more chariots than you. And they got more people than you. Oh, my God, I'm already scared. That's our instant response. Oh, Lord, look how big this is. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know your is a setup for God to work a miracle in your life. You can't have a miracle without a problem or a dilemma. You can't receive a promise without going through the problems of life. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll stick closer than a brother. I'll be in your corner, and I'll encourage you every step. The enemy rears his head up. We say, oh, my God, he's too big. I just don't know how I'm going to win this battle. He's bigger than I am. He's greater than I am. God says, don't let your heart be faint. Don't fear. Don't tremble. Don't be terrified because your enemy, watch this. Remember, your enemy has already been defeated by God. Brother Stephen, open that door, walk out there and grab the cross for me real quick. Your enemy has already been defeated. It's already done. I was going to bring one. I really was. But, but I, I was quick in my God. And, and I, was, I, I just felt in my spirit, don't bring a towel. Because sure enough, you show an example of throwing a towel in the ring. Somebody's going to say, that's me. I gave up. I quit. I'm just through with it. I'm done with that situation. I am over it. Right? That's the way we are. Bring it up here and lay it right up inside the, the boxing ring here. You're acting like that thing's heavy. It's not. Think about how Jesus carried it. Hallelujah to God. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am. 
Yeah, I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. You see, we're so worried about our enemy. When, when the Lord told the children of Israel, he said, don't worry, don't fret, don't, don't get discouraged, don't feel like you're, you're going to lose. Don't feel like there, there's more for you than there is against you. As a matter of fact, just a little while after that, there's a prophet that marches to the top of a mountain with his servant, the armor bearer that's with him, and they're praying, and the enemy has surrounded their mountain. And as their mountain is surrounded by the enemy, the servant's looking at the man of God. He's saying, you know what? I, I just don't know how we're going to win this battle. I, look at how many there is. And the Lord says to him, open your eyes, or the, the the, the prophet says to the, the Lord, open the eyes of my servant so that he'll see that there's more for us than there is against us. And his eyes were open, and he's seen the armies of God. You know what God's telling the church today? He's telling the church, open your eyes. There's been a cross that's went before you. The cross has already stood. The cross has already been visited. I've already been to the cross. The victory has already been won. I want to say it again. The victory has already been won. When he came down off the cross, he was lifeless. He had no blood flowing in his veins. He was dead, but they put him in a tomb. And I believe with all of my heart that the devil got scared because there was a visitation that was taking place. There were some keys being taken away. And then on the third day, the devil knew. He'd already taken my keys. I no longer have dominion over this. But now, the third day, he arises. I believe God's trying to tell somebody today, open your eyes. There's nothing on the cross. The tomb is empty. The victory's already been won. You already overcame the sickness. You've already overcome the disease. You've already made it through the battle. You are victorious. Rise up and work. Worship me and praise him. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Let's see if I can get that to stand up. We are victorious through the cross because he's already fought the battle. It's already been won. You know, many times in our life we fight battles and we go through struggles and, and, and we have these uh, bouts these rounds that we feel like we just got pulverized, we got beat up, and we get back to our corner. If you watch boxing or if you watch fighting any at all, when the fighter gets back to the corner, there's people in his corner. And there's usually about three people. There's one, which I never understood, would really aggravate me if I was ever in the corner, that's sitting there splatting water on his face and rubbing his face, putting Vaseline all over him. There's another one behind him pouring ice or water or putting an ice pack on the back of his son. It's going to be all right. That round was a tough round. He threw some lucky punches. He barely got by you a couple of times. Your defense came down just a little bit, and you, you failed just a little bit here. But it's going to be all right because I've been sparring with you. I've been boxing with you. I've got the fight fixed. I already know the outcome of the fight, son. If you'll just stay in the fight, don't give up heart. Get your heart set on on a victory. Get your mindset on the victory. Get your attitude set on the victory. I believe that God's in your corner this morning and he's telling you, I've already been to the cross. I've already defeated the devil. There's nothing new under the sun. Get back up and fight the battle. Don't give up. The next round is yours. The next blessing's yours. Oh, come on somebody. We need to understand that the cross has already been to the battle. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God. Been in those fights, just want to give up. I ain't got no more left in me. I'm tired. Just want to quit. Just want to throw in the towel. Praise God, I didn't bring one. Just want to throw in the towel. 
just want to say, you know what, uh, forget it, I, I'm done. How many people have come to a church, uh, been baptized in Jesus' name, been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, only to walk out of the church and have the enemy attack them, and they give up so easily. They just throw in the towel. It's better not to fight against that bickering woman. It's better not to argue with all the religions. Uh, it's better not to have to put up and put down all my addictions and all of my problems. Uh, if you could only open up your spiritual ears and hear right behind you. There's a voice in your corner. He's telling you, you can do it. You can fight. Don't give up so easily. I filled you with my spirit. This is only the beginning. There's coming a miracle in your life. Don't throw it in yet. Keep fighting. Doesn't matter what the odds are. The Lord's on my side. Doesn't matter what the devil brings against me. I got Jesus. Doesn't matter what the devil says. I got Jesus. It doesn't matter if the circumstances are insurmountable. I've got Jesus on my side. It doesn't matter if it looks hopeless. I've got Jesus in my corner. It doesn't matter if the situation is bigger than you are. You've got Jesus in your corner. He's greater than anything this world has ever known. He needs to be heard. He needs to be sounded off. He needs to be praised in the midst of every battle that we go into. Paul said in Romans 8.31, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us. If God be for us. What does that tell us? That tells us that God takes a position in your life when you get saved. That tells us that when God takes position in your life, that everything that enters into your life has to go through God. Every trial, every enemy, every circumstance has to go through the approval of the God before you. If God be for us, it doesn't matter what the person or the problem or the circumstance is. I've got Jesus and he's fighting my battle. He's going before me. He's <laughs> Hallelujah. When it says God's before us, it means that he's taken position. He's not just before us, so he's all around us. Romans 8, it says there is no condemnation to those that are in Jesus Christ. It says Christ has made them free from the law of sin and death. <laughs> to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If we walk in the spirit, the spirit of God dwells us. It says all this in Romans chapter 8, that the spirit one day will quicken our mortal bodies and we will rise to meet him in the air. It says also in Romans 8, he has adopted us into his family. He is making intercession for us according to the will of God. All things work together for the good of them that love him because he has called us, because he's justified us because he has glorified us because he's filled us with his spirit and his power and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. When an inventor invents something, he takes pride in it. He puts his name on it. He puts his name behind it. He puts his name before it. He pours everything he has into it. He invests into it because he takes pride in that because it means something to him. He cares for it. He babies it. He makes sure that it has everything it needs. He makes sure that it, it, it goes to the right stores and it's set in the right retail atmosphere. He makes sure that he is able to advertise it properly and that it's not defamed or, or, or destroyed. He makes sure of all these things. But the Bible says that if Christ be for us, who can be against us? And that we are baptized with the spirit of peace and comfort in him. And that we are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If God is going to live in your life... Do you think he wants you to live a defeated life? 
Do you think he wants you walking around a beat down, sorry, sad Christian? Do you think he wants you walking around angry all the time or sad all the time? That's not the God we serve. We serve a God this morning that when he filled us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he cut every chain, every bondage, every sin, every addiction that causes those spirits to come upon our life. He said, I've given you freedom. I've given you liberty in the Holy Ghost. Uh, that freedom and liberty is the ability to operate in the kingdom of God. That's why he said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Because I believe that the Lord, that the Lord knows that if you really got the word, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, you would have a victorious mind. I believe that if you were really, truly baptized with the Holy Ghost and filled with the power of God, you're going to fight battles, you're going to get, go through rounds, and you're going to be in the boxing ring with the devil a few times. It, it's, you're not uh, exempt from those things. You're going to have to go through those battles because you're an enemy of the, of the devil. Amen? If you're on God's side, you're on the devil's side. If you're on the devil's side, you're not on God's side. He's not going to fight to get you back. He already went to the cross and sacrificed for you. Amen. I don't believe that God has to go to the cross again. I don't believe that Jesus has to be crucified again to prove to you that he loves you and that he'll die for you and he'll do anything in this world for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son one time. That's it. One time. Why? Because it only takes once. Woo! It only takes one time. Because when God fills you with his spirit, you begin to understand and experience the victories of God in your life. If we'll let the mind of Christ be in us, we won't be defeated. We won't be walking around hurting and sorry and, and, and complaining all the time. We'll be happy people. Amen. Amen. We'll go back to singing that old song. We are happy people, yes we are. We are happy people, yes we are. Come on. Been baptized in Jesus' name, spoke in tongues as the Holy Ghost came. We are happy people, yes we are. Instead, we are happy people. Yay. I remember singing that song one time in a church service. We were on revival. I don't know how it began to sing or who was singing it, but I, I remember singing it. We, we were actually, it was right after the preaching. We were in the altar. People were getting the Holy Ghost, and they started singing that song. We are happy people. Yes, we are. And they were singing the words, and all of a sudden, everybody started going, ha, 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 Unashamed. Okay, you can laugh at me all day long. Sounds funny, looks funny. Praising God. When we let when we let God into our mind and begin to operate in our mind, we understand that He is in every situation in life. Your life is not so broken and so messed up that God can't help you pick it up and put it back together again. There's not a person that's too far off from God that he can't reach and he can't touch and that he can't fill with the Holy Ghost. You see, the Bible says that we've been endured for a night, but the Lord is on my side. Joy comes in the morning when we understand that I'm weeping right now. I'm going through pain right now. I'm going through temptation right now. It's going to be all right because that's a part of the seasons of life. It's a part of life. They're going to come and they're going to go, but in the midst of your weeping, if you can have the attitude of David, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. If you can find some worship and some praise and some magnifying God in the midst of your weeping, you'll understand he's in your corner. I believe that Satan tries 
to form every weapon he can against his enemy. And the enemy's weapons are coming against us at greater strides than ever before. But I got a word for the church this morning. God's in your corner. The Lord's on my side. The world and all the things of this world are going to pass away. But when it's all said and done, Jesus will still be there. Amen. I looked at some wrestling videos this weekend. I watched some wrestlers as they get into the ring and Everybody enters with confidence. Hallelujah. Everybody jumps in in confidence. Everybody's excited. Even the, the challenger, as he's coming down, he's playing music. He's got his hood over his head, and he's dancing, and he, he's punching, and he's shadow boxing, and he's sweating up a storm, and he's getting warmed up. He's getting ready for that fight. Inside his mind, if he's got a good coach, he has been told over and over and over and over, this man that you're fighting, he's only human. You're better than he is. You're stronger than he is. You're hungrier than he is. He doesn't have the hunger for victory that you have because you're the fighter. You're the challenger. He's the victor. The victory or the hunger to maintain the victory and the crown is always less than the hunger of the challenger. The guy that has the belt is not as hungry as the guy that wants the belt. Because the guy that has the belt has had to fight through many fighters to get that belt around his waist. But the guy that wants the belt is coming up through the ranks. He's got to fight fighter after fighter after fighter. The guy that has the belt is only being fought by the challenger that is next in line. So when the challenger is headed to the ring, he's thinking in his mind, I've got this victory won. I'm hungrier than he is. I'm stronger than he is. I've watched every move that he makes. I know when he throws his right cross or when he's going to give me an uppercut. I know when he's going to throw that kick. I know when he's going to dance to the left or to the right. You see, God has given you the ability through the power of the Holy Ghost that every move the enemy makes, you can be one step ahead of it because he's already the victor. He's already blessed you. He's already given you the victory in your life. He said, there's nothing new under the sun. Whatever you're going through, it's not new to God. And whatever you're going through, somebody else has overcome. You don't have to be a victim to the trials that you face today. You don't have to be a loser to the, the, the battles and the fights that you're in today. You can be victorious. But you got to get your man set. I am victorious. If God be for me, who can be against me? I've got Jesus in my life. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. In the world of professional wrestling, they have all kinds of crazy matches. They have steel cage matches. They have grudge matches. They have matches when the last one standing wins the match, and there are about 20 wrestlers and fighters in the ring at once. Wow. Whew. Wouldn't that be amazing? Say you you won a battle after fighting over 20 people in the ring. I think what I would do is when the bell went ding, ding, I'd fall on the ground knocked out. I'd wait till the last person fell, and then I'd jump up and go, God, come on, let's go. Let's fight. Hallelujah, I'm just teasing. But one of the more, one guy stands in the corner while one gets in the ring and fights. And while that guy's in the ring fighting, He's wrestling and he's tossing and he's trying to get the upper hand. If he gets tired or he gets weak, he can move to the corner and tag his partner. In this walk with God and in this battle in the ring that we fight round after round with the enemy, we have something that the enemy doesn't have. Hallelujah. Somebody to tag. Whew. You see, when we start getting tired and we start getting weary, 
and we start getting wore down, and we feel like we're about to just be not be overcome by the enemy, we can reach out to the corner and tag Jesus in the corner. The devil's dragging you one way, trying to keep you away from the corner of where your tag team partner's at. And he's trying to beat you down. And he's trying to bury you in the, 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 the tarp of that canvas. He's trying to plant your face in there and pound you so that you'll want to give up. And so that he can get down and give you that three count. One, two, three. You're defeated. And he's won. But what he doesn't understand is that when you start getting down, you're getting into a place of prayer. Oh, God, I don't know if I can make it through this battle anymore. I don't know if I can fight this fight anymore. I don't know, God, I just don't have no strength. I'm weary in my body. I'm weary in my mind. I'm weary in my flesh, oh, God. But, oh, Lord, Oh, God, I can't. The burden's too heavy. The weight is too heavy. But I know, God, you're in my corner. I know, God, that you're just an arm length away. I know, God, you're just a prayer away. I know, God, you're just an intercession away. I know, God, you're just a tear away. I know, God, you're on my side. And when I reach out, God, I feel your touch, and it gives me strength. I reach out, and I feel your touch, and it gives me power and I overcome the enemy but the devil don't have anybody to fight with him he's on his own I believe and I laughed about this the other day I believe that that when the devil goes to fight he may look around and say, who's with me? And the little imps, they say, uh-uh, I know who you're going to fight. No, 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 no. He, come on, devil. You know the last time we went to fight that dear old sister. Whew. We, try, we tried to attack her, and oh, my goodness, I, I still ain't got nothing left back there. After I got chewed up, I ain't got nothing left. The devil may go to another little little imp and tell him, hey, I need some help. I need you in my corner today. I'm going to go fight Brother Michael. And the imp looks at him and says, oh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think that's going to happen, devil. Last time I went, he bound me up, and he beat me down. He stomped on my head. He kicked me in the mouth. He blacked my eyes. He broke my nose. I'm not going with you, devil. I'm not going to stand in your corner. I know who's on his side. He's got somebody named Jesus. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He was before you were ever created, Lucifer. He'll defeat you every time. He cast you out of the streets of God. He cast you out of heaven. You can't win against him. Come on, devil. I want you to go with me to fight Brother Stephen. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, we, we had a few victories, but, uh, you know, something happened to him the other day. Uh, I, we, were, we were trying to get him in the house, and when we got to the house, he had the word on. Whew. We, we heard it from the street, devil. We, we heard the word going in there. And, you know, it's really kind of odd because it wasn't the Bible book reader that I heard, but it sounded much like the voice of God. I can, I can almost hear those words that I heard in the garden that day that we tried to tempt him. Uh, Satan, get behind me. Uh, come on, somebody. Yeah. 
You're on your own, devil. You're on your own. I'm not going to do it. Because he's got Jesus in his corner. You see, we fail so many times in our temptations and our battles because we neglect to reach out to God. We think, oh, I can do it. I got this. Only one drink is okay. Only one cigarette, I'll be all right. Only one moment on that computer alone will be okay. Only one little fall here. Only one bad word there. and Only one attitude here. Only once not being obedient to my pastor. It'll be all right. It'll be okay. I got this. Then the next thing you know, you went from standing to kneeling. Oh, I thought I had this. I thought everything was okay. I, I thought I, I could handle this on my own. And uh, Okay, Lord, I, I may need your help for just a moment, Lord. But, you know, I, I, let, let, let me just try to, try to make it through. How many times have we, uh, have we all said, if I can only get through this, if I can only make it through this, then it'll be all right. Just a just few more days or a few more moments or a few more uh, hours or just give me a little bit more time and, and I can kick it on my own. You can't do it. You can't do it. Come on, musicians. It's when the fighter in the ring starts getting desperate for help that he begins to look to his corner. I'll tell you what the devil does. He tries to disorient you in the ring. He tries to get you turned around. See, there's four corners in a boxing ring. There's four corners in a, in a wrestling match, in a wrestling ring. So what the devil will do is he'll distract you from the corner that means the most. And what we do in life so many times is we reach out to emptiness, hoping that's where our Savior's at. And we always, it's human nature. It's hum, every one of us have done this. This is where our help is right here in this corner. But we always reach out to here, to a friend. I need your help. I need your prayers. Oh, I'm praying for you. I was talking to somebody the other day, I haven't talked to him in a while. I, I sent him a text that I've been praying for him in the mornings. Almost every morning I pray for this person. I sent him a text the other day, and I told him, I said, hey, I said, uh, just want you to know that you're on my heart in prayer almost every day, and that I love you and I'm praying for you. person visited our church one time. That's it, just one time. He responded, and he said, yeah, right. So I responded to him, and I told him, I said, I said, that's okay. I said, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. You can believe me if you want, or you don't have to believe me. But whatever you're going through proves that there's somebody praying for you. About five minutes later, my phone rang. I picked up my phone. I hear this voice on the other end. He says, Pastor, I'm sorry. I said, it's all right, man, no big deal. He says, I'm sorry I had an attitude with you in that text. I said, no, it's all right, man, it's, it, it really is. It, it's okay, don't, don't worry about it. I said, I just want you to know I am praying for you. Very, very few times does a day go by that I don't mention your name in prayer. He was crying on the other end of the phone. He said, I, I want you to know I, just, I really have been going through a lot of things in my life lately. Because I've been fighting a lot of devils. He goes, and when you responded that, whatever I'm going through, I would know that somebody's praying for me because I'm going through it, that I'm making through it. He goes, it struck something in me. He goes, I realize that somebody is praying for me. Somebody is praying that God will touch me and God will bless me and that God will keep his hand upon me. He said, because I realize my whole family's lost. I ain't got nobody else praying for me. 
He said, it's only been the hand of God that I've been through some of the circumstances and lived through some of the things I've been through lately. Let me tell you something. Prayer works. And there's a God that's in your corner that's fighting for you. He's already been to the cross. He's just waiting for you this morning to reach out and stretch your hand out to him and say, God, I need your help. I think we should do that right now. Just stretch our hands out to him right now. I need your help, Lord, in my life. I need your touch. I need your 